I hope you can hear us. So at least we have one speaker here whose picture is actually on the screen, and I'm not that one, but Kanishk is here. <laughs> so he has been on all cover pages uh, in the whole event. Okay, <clears throat> my name is Jen Kuzuchi, and I'm uh, representing IBM Ireland. Uh, and uh, uh, IBM Ireland here, I'm one of the executive partners, and. Uh, with my colleague uh, Kanishk, we are going to talk you through the proof of concept that we have built together with Cumulosity uh, IoT. Uh, first of all, I just want to confirm that we finally, after several months of struggle with the uh, uh, teams, we finally signed our partnership agreement, so we are officially partners uh, globally with Software AG. So uh, I will briefly set the context in terms of our uh, intelligent load management. And when it comes to what load management means, I'm not sure if there are any utilities uh, industry uh, attendees here, but load management is mainly refers to the term of managing the power and the voltage on the electricity grid. And our solution is uh, providing a, a good approach to uh, bring intelligence and uh, smarts actions on it. So when we talk about power uh, outages, probably as a normal household in your respective countries, you recognize the term, so electricity goes out. And uh, when that happens, actually public and regulators know uh, about it from the media. Uh, it, and it, it's probably one of those magical moments that information flows faster than the electrons on the grid, since everyone knows about it, obviously, electricity goes, and then media starts to ask questions. And this happens several times over a year, and the two cases that we are going to talk here is one from Australia. It was a very sunny and hot Christmas, even it sounds interesting, and they, they were cooking turkeys in their ovens. Because of the climate being very hot, ACs were on, the kitchen, the lights, and everything, and over a local network around Perth area, electricity outage had happened, and with the shutdown mechanisms that are inherited in the current infrastructure of uh, electricity grids across the world, there is a kind of automatic shutdown to protect the assets and also uh, reduce the danger. And when that happens, or when it happened in that instance, uh, it hit 120,000 people over that Christmas period, between Christmas period till the 28th of December. Since certain assets were damaged, they, it's not a restore is not possible. And you can imagine that the electricity workers were also enjoying their Christmas. So you can imagine the mayhem that happened uh, in that period. And the second case is a little bit different. Uh, imagine that you are getting a message from your electricity supplier or the government or however it is structured in your country. Uh, whoever is your electricity supplier, sending you a text and asking you to reduce your electricity consumption. So can you imagine where you start? <laughs> so do you turn off the television or turn off the uh, heating when outside is very cold, given the usual Canada conditions? So in this instance, again, this hit the news faster than the electrons, since it was an unreasonable request in such a cold weather. So all of these things are happening. So maybe you were so lucky that you didn't have it uh, in your region. And uh, it creates a huge level of frustration, lots of uh, news. And you then realize that why aren't they doing their job properly so we can have our electricity since it's ca kind of utility. But it's not that simple. And the bad news is it's, these things are going to get worse. So uh, you are lucky if you, have a, if you have never had anything like this, but the reason that it's going to happen is because of the notion for cli climate action and sustainability actions, and that drives the electrification of industries. So everyone wants to use electricity for transport, for heating, and uh, cars travel. And all of this is going to drive more demand on the uh, grids from the relevant grids in the countries but because of the sustainability you are also seeing that lots of distributed energy 
resources are introduced to the grid, like uh, people are putting solar panels at the top of the roofs and they are giving it to the network, uh, trying to get money out of it rightly. People are investing on uh, wind farms offshore, onshore, and with a set of different pieces. So the generation of electricity is getting decentralized. It's not coming from the power plant anymore. It's coming from small, small little tiny places that feeds into the grid. And and people who are who were using the grid is consuming more energy since they bought a new car, they bought some other things that claimed to be consuming electricity compared to the previous version. So because demand and supply is increasing, fluctuations is likely going to happen more. So, uh, and the very reason that this happens is if you consider electricity grids from a high voltage lines that you see them when traveling out of the city, the big, lines across the city, across the intercity roads, they are called as a high voltage. And then when you are walking in your street, you may not see the electricity lines in some developed uh, cities, they are all underground, but if you go to a little village somewhere in your country, you may see electric lines. And that part is considered as the low voltage. And this is where the fluctuations are causing the outages. Uh, that's, and the very reason that uh, they are not um, monitored is they are too low level from a grid management perspective and the data in that low voltage uh, network is not monitored as the utilities monitoring the high voltage lines, uh, the big lines and the big poles that you see over. So uh, the, uh, the, the other sad news on this one is Electricity organizations cannot solve this by throwing more copper, more lines, new poles. This is more about using the existing resources in and out in a smart way, since throwing more infrastructure is not going to solve it. Uh, and having said that, let me move on to the uh, a little bit more detail. We talk about the grid, etc. But in this picture, what we are outlining is a uh, grid includes lines to your street, to your offices, and they are all coming from the center. And our solution uh, that we built uh, with Cumulosity IoT considers to put some measurement technology into the grid, into the lines that you see on the street, and, uh, and collects data from those points. And bringing them together, you will be able to f uh, pick, uh, paint the full picture that you will have the full understanding of what data that you are uh, uh, collecting, you can aggregate it and you can do some analysis to build set of uh, algorithms that can tell you based on the historic data that there will be a problem coming. And this was the problem uh, that uh, we tackled uh, when we started the uh, proof of concept. And uh, let me take you to a little bit more detail. So uh, from streets and the piles uh, to the back office that makes uh, this possible. So a uh, Cumulosity IoT platform connects with set of uh, measurement technology. Uh, and uh, the capability of the platform comes with the richness that has built in partners for OEMs, and uh, those OEMs also works with multiple protocols in terms of communication between the device, the measurement technology that is attached to the electricity network, and the mothership that sits on the cloud and connects the data. So that's a major capability and a large ecosystem that Cumulosity manages, and this is one of the major problems if you want to start to build this from scratch, since there are millions of different brands that does the same thing, but they use, again, not a single protocol in that uh, piece. Compatibility is a major problem, but the platform brings all this capability. And uh, the data collected from the uh, red dots from the low voltage and middle voltage network and feed into the uh, center. So, uh, but what happens when, the da when data uh, comes into the center? So you have a good time series information, but what happens there? So this is the main uh, 
critical components. So the left-hand side uh, brings the data, keeps it in a very structured manner in the system. You can do all sorts of things, but you need the intelligence. And intelligence is brought into the solution uh, with IBM's What's Next technology. That's a platform that can help you to analyze the data, uh, establish the patterns, establish algorithms to predict certain things, and also can help you with a very thin language model, specialized for utility language, to help you to interact uh, with the load managers who are managing the grid. And even in the solution, uh, the main considerations is to keep the mo foundation model very thin. Since we need to care about response time and the speed of the AI that will augment intelligence to the human, but we also need to be careful that we are trying to save energy and also make sure that everything works efficiently so we cannot have huge algorithms running which will take long time and also it will consume huge amount of electricity. There is also a sustainability concern established in building up the algorithms and configuring the what's next component. So what is happening here is data is coming from the left hand side to the right hand side. It is processed and then fed back to the uh, a community uh, IoT again to build up a kind of interface with the uh, load manager. And uh, I would like to ask Kanish to give us a little bit of a technical overview here yeah. before we come to the experience of the user. Yeah, thank you, Cenk, and hi, everyone. I'm Kanish Chaturvedi. I'm a solutions architect here at Software AG. And yeah, I'm working together with IBM on this joint Jumpstart system. So yeah, as we learned from this architecture, we are utilizing key components of both Cumulosity and Watsonx here. So as shown, uh, basically, we can use Cumulosity IoT to capture real-time data from different devices and sensors. And then the live streaming data can be managed using Cumulosity's operational store. And the data for the larger interval can also be archived using Cumulosity's own data lake functionality, which is called Data Hub. And now this device streaming data can be uh, used very efficiently with Watson X for uh, training machine learning models and also for performing inferencing on an already trained machine learning model. And similarly, using right MLOps life cycle, the regular interval data from Cumulosity can be uh, used or can be used basically for further improving the trained machine learning models on Watson X. And in addition, the Watson X integrated NLP capabilities can provide a layer on top of this workflow where the users can, uh, p can get the assistance from this uh, LL, uh, uh, LLM or NLP capabilities that uh, basically they will be able to get the insights from machine learning models in simple and natural language. And now, uh, as if required, the trained machine learning models can basically be exported from Watson X and embedded directly within the device. And Cumulosity already supports this feature of embedding machine learning models uh, using its thin edge functionality. So the significant advantage of this uh, feature basically is that it enables uh, quicker decision making, uh, lowers uh, d data processing or, or the, the data transmission cost, and also it basically uh, enables or it, it improves uh, security uh, because the uh, analytics will be performed directly locally on, on, on the device. So in this way, basically, we can truly achieve the uh, federated intelligence on the edge. And now I would like to hand over back to thank, you. Thank you so much, Kanik. So uh, we, again, user experience is the most important thing when it comes to dealing with data and intelligence embedded to it. Since we can't throw uh, data on a screen and expect users to figure it out, we need to assist and augment intelligence into it. So let me introduce Karen. So she is the load manager. So her job is to make sure that they, uh, utility can take actions uh, when such a thing may happen, since there are ways for utility organizations to manage the grid through their operations technology. And this system is going to provide some insights to Karen and inform Karen that something is going to happen. So from an experience perspective, what, we ex what, we, what Karen would love to have uh, is a kind of a 
horizon for that. In the next three minutes, I'm not expecting anything because of the historic data and also where the current data coming from the system. In this graph, to make it more easy, we got it complicated since we put the prediction figures and actual figures together. But if you consider the sequence of events happening, is <laughs> we may have a prediction, but actual comes on a kind of second by second basis. But what we want is to m make sure that we don't have peaks. But because of historic data the, so, uh, and the way that the current data is coming, there will be peaks. And when those peaks are there, we want Karen to know uh, that there is something going on. And in the context of what Karen is looking at is a network, let's say four or 5,000 different transformers impacting maybe uh, 40, 50,000 households. And she's getting the insight from the low voltage area, not from the high voltage space. And she can see much more granularity. And if she gets a peak, then it means trouble is coming. And in certain uh, jurisdictions, uh, there are penalties associated with having outage uh, in the network. And uh, the three minutes is, is a rule from Germany, but there are different metrics and service levels established to make sure that you don't provide outage. And once you find out that it's coming, then from the technology perspective, you have three minutes, to five minutes to fix it. And when uh, something is coming, Karen needs to be notified. But in the next minute, uh, when uh, she realizes that something is coming, uh, she, needs, she may need to ask questions. And she may uh, uh, either get, try to get more information or wants to understand why it's happening the way it is happening. And on that basis, she works with the DSO assistant. And distribution system operator is the DSO. Uh, and in utilities, it's a very established term that every country has. And in Germany, there are multiples, like hundreds of them. But uh, DSO assistant is there to tell Karen in native language, na natural na language, in a give any answers based on the foundation model specialized for utility and also the data that is coming from uh, the system. But Another element is if you have your asset management in any system, the SAPs, Oracles, uh, if you have the maintenance schedules, if you have any legacy information that, that all utilities have, it can also consume that data and make the correlations and give you an answer that uh, this is happening because there is a maintenance happening in another space and the voltage is coming from there or the current is higher and so on. So the DSO assistant provides a communication on a very complex data set. And she can ask many questions like, uh, what are the expected peaks? Uh, how likely that this peak is going to occur since the solution can give some percents in terms of probability uh, this is happening. And that changes on a second by second basis. And she can also ask, what will be the consequences if this goes north? Uh, and what will happen, uh, what had happened before when such a thing uh, appeared in, 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 in previously? So this, while this conversation is going on, minutes pass and you get closer to the peak. And uh, the more you get closer, the more information that uh, the foundation model can provide you. And overall, uh, the depth of the information behind the screen is not for humans to articulate. So we are talking about 40,000 households, lots of low level network measuring points, and you need someone to ask questions and get immediate answers. So that technology, that intelligence is injected into Cumulosity IoT in this POC by IBM Watson, uh, Watson X uh, Gen AI. And uh, that's the experience, and this is what matters to the utilities and the uh, load managers. And if they are happy, then they will have a much more healthy grid and less frustrated customers in the middle of Christmas or in a cold weather that they can keep continue using their heat. So Kanish, so I'm handing over this to you. Uh, yeah, so this is the joint architecture that we are working on for enabling federated intelligence on the edge. So here you can see that we have a Watsonix assistant for Cumulosity that load managers like Karen use 
to get more insights from machine learning models in simple and natural language. So as we can see, Karen can use this assistant to ask her query in natural language, and then the relevant services of Watson X can forward this query to the appropriate machine learning model, retrieves the raw prediction results back, and pass these raw prediction results to WatsonX.ai. And now WatsonX.ai uses language model to translate these raw prediction results into these natural language as per the queries queried by the user or used by the user. And uh, what kind of language model can we use here? So with WatsonX, we can plug and play large language models, for example, IBM Grey Knight, Meta's Llama, maybe some other open source large language models. But we can also plug additionally uh, domain-specific small language model, which are usually smaller in size and are more efficient for that particular specific domain. So basically, these type of small language models are more suitable for such edge-related scenarios because they enable uh, quick, efficient, and specialized NLP capabilities uh, within the limited uh, uh, computational and energy resources of these devices. So IBM is currently working on one such small language model that, is, that will be trained specifically for utilities-specific data, and we plan to use that small language model for this architecture. But for now, we have already realized some parts of this architecture and implemented it by utilizing a large language model, uh, Meta's Llama, uh, uh, to be specific. So I would like to very quickly show a live demo. How does it look like? So here, this is my browser. So I open my Cumulosity tenant. And in my Cumulosity tenant, you can see that I have an Watson X assistant embedded within it. And, uh, and basically, uh, I can use this assistant, or load managers like Karen can use this assistant to ask a query in natural language. And behind it, there is a machine learning model, uh, which is a time series forecasting model, which predicts the power load for the upcoming days, and which is trained over the historical data of power consumptions uh, for, from last year. And basically, this chatbot can be used to ask a query to that machine learning model in natural language, and it can get insights basically using the large language model. So for example, I can ask one question. I have already listed some questions here to save time. So for example, if I ask, can you find a difference in the power load predictions during the weekdays and the weekend for the upcoming week? So here, according to this architecture, this query is being sent to that particular machine learning point endpoint. And you can see that it returns the raw prediction results because there are already some readings in it. And then when the user asks, can you find a difference, it basically automatically found or computed the average of the power load predictions for the next weeks, weekdays, and weekends. So you can see the response that, yes, there is a difference in the power load prediction. And the average power load prediction for the weekdays is this and power load prediction for the weekend is something this. So basically, this computed the raw prediction results from the machine learning endpoint and then formed a response in natural language query uh, for, the, for the user. Similarly, Karen can also use it to ask some other kind of questions. For example, how likely is it that the power load peak will occur in the next week? And can you tell on which particular days? So again, it is querying that machine learning point endpoint, end and this is basically generating a response again in natural language that based on historical data and seasonality, it's likely that the power load peak will occur within the next week, for example, Wednesday or Thursday. And then uh, apart from the, in addition, it also provided the explanation. So these are just very initial examples or beginner's example. But of course, this chatbot can also be used for asking queries where it can help the load managers or field workers for actionable guidance that if, I, if there is a power peak load, what action as a user or load manager should I take? So it can also guide those particular users in simple language without understanding the technicality behind it. So yeah, this was the quick demo. And I will switch back to the presentation. Uh, maybe uh, for the final concluding remark, I would like oh, to yeah. invite uh, Shink again. So uh, bec because of what has happened in the last 50 years, we have the climate uh, change problem. So global warming is real. So you may have a different view, and we can discuss it separately, but it's happening. And it will, it, will it resolve by everything that all governments uh, and Paris Treaty is trying to achieve? It's a question mark, maybe. But uh, the only thing that we can do is to keep doing new things to make best use of what we have and change the way that certain things are done. But because of this change, 
we will face with new problems. And those problems will be around fluctuations in the network because there will be more distributed energy resources plugged into the network to give us more electricity, but they will also bring problems uh, with, with, with every installation. And managing the network at a medium or high level has been the practice for several years uh, since the electricity networks started to grow. But th that high level view was helpful when electricity was central, centrally produced. But now it is di redistributed uh, in different locations and th this changes the level of complexity. So that's why the monitoring level needs to go down from the current levels to a more granular level within the network. And with our solution, what we try to do is to bring the uh, leading edge IoT platform used in many industries successfully and bring the best of breed uh, intelligence that can introduce a language model, make it thin and make it utility specific combine it together to, to augment, human uh, uh, augment humans with intelligence. So AI is not going to manage the grid. You still need humans to make the decision. But the time that they need to have access to certain data or correlate millions of data points is not for us to do. We need to use the uh, AI. And uh, that's what can prepare us for uh, dealing with the global warming and less fluctuations on the Great. Thank you so much.